Welcome back to the As I Sit Here video podcast. Boy, I've been on a bit of a long stretch from anything, tell you the truth. Been doing a lot of other things, but this one I had to get back into. It's kind of a two-in-one, because, well, the As I Sit Here video podcasts, one is about wrestling, the other is about video games. As I sit here, I'm going to be playing video games, and I want to talk about video games. Kind of in the sense of, well, this will be pro wrestling. Pro wrestling video games. There's not too many of them out there in this day and age. Unless it's, you know, WWE, 2K, whatever. And I'm glad that 2K kind of has the rights to something like that, because... Eh, I don't know. I, I've heard good things about their stuff, and it's not, it's not EA Sports. At the very least, 2K I do find to be a good competitor... For EA, at the very least. But, that being the deal, that's the only thing out there, isn't there? Like, WWE 2K is like the only thing that I'm aware of. Now, sure, there, there's got to be a lot of stuff that maybe there's, there's European uh, produced games or stuff that comes over from Japan. One thing that I was made aware of, uh, Jesus, a good eh, seven or so years ago, was Fire Pro Wrestling, which I do have. And I kind of dig it. What is that? Fire Pro Wrestling Returns on the PS2. It's a very good simulator-style game. And mm, I can't say much against it. I do think it is lacking a little bit, but also there's there's a lot going for it, if you ask me. So, I mean, that being part of it, the 2K stuff, I don't know, I guess I'm just done with it, because I, I've had my share of WWE games over the years. And this goes way back to, God, when the SmackDown game, even before the SmackDown games, when those first came out, uh, there would have been, what... There was WWF Raw, or Warzone, excuse me, and WWF Attitude. If you remember those games, I had them on the PS1. They were decent. And along the way, it's just, I, I started to play different stuff. The SmackDown games I really enjoyed, initially. Had a good love for them. You know, I don't even know if I want to play video games right now, because this might just distract me from what I'm trying to say and think. So maybe I won't. Maybe I won't. Matter of fact, I had a DVD, and I'll, I'll throw that out for kind of just something to watch. <sighs> and hey, look at it. What am I watching here? Just uh, SummerSlam 88. Yep, the very first SummerSlam. You guessed it. The very first SummerSlam. Gorilla Monsoon. And Superstar Billy Grandbaby. Now, whether he... Stole the idea from Dusty Rhodes on the, the the kind of jive talk and all that stuff, whatever. He's there for this one, because Jesse the Body Ventura, if you remember, was special guest referee for the main event. Anyway, on with the video game talk. Although this is about wrestling, so I'm just kind of giving you a heads up on what's going on. Uh, I did play the SmackDown games for quite a while, had quite a few of them. The last one I remember getting was, what, SmackDown vs. Raw 2010? Eh, and I mean, and that was still on PS2. I hadn't, uh, hadn't made the graduation up to the PS3 and the 360 at that point. Still playing those yet. I'm not up to the PS4 and the Xbox One. The X-Bone, if you will. Don't have those yet. So, eh, maybe the, uh, maybe the WWE, the 2K games are... That much better, who knows? But the way the product is on TV these days, talking about the Federation, the Wii, it needs improvement because they don't talk about the match. They don't talk about what's going on in the ring. It's fucking wrestling. You need to do that. So the video games, I don't even know. Are they still, oh, $9.99 a month, $9.99 a month, get it, get it, get it. Are they still talking about that stuff even on the video game as you're fighting? Or does the video game even talk about the action in the ring? Nice neckbreaker there. Oh, he's working on the arm, blah, blah, blah. That would be counterintuitive. 
if your video game is better at telling the story in the ring than your TV product does. You know? Your broadcast. But that being said, I don't know. I can't say it would just be poor if it, if it did. Uh, my whole thing of it, you know, honestly, the TV is kind of distracting me. I don't, don't want to have that right now. I just want to have my thoughts. For the video games, though, getting back to Fire Pro Wrestling Returns, it was a great simulator game. Uh, it, it Creative enough when you go to create a wrestler and all that stuff. Oh, and I also go back to uh, at least one of the games that I liked even before that. Legends of Wrestling. It was slower, methodical, maybe a bit cheesy, but it had a very good old school feel to it. Now, I did buy uh, Legends of Wrestling 2, and I never played Showdown Legends 3. I just, uh, Legends 2 turned me off so badly, but it had good ideas. And Fire Pro, sure, it, it's kind of comic booky in the animation, but the style for it is okay. I have no problem with that. I wouldn't know what engine, what style to run this, this, this new mythical wrestling game that I want to invent, or that I think should be made, because I don't have the wherewithal to do so, nor the knowledge. But, I would think... I remember in Legends 2, you started off as a jobber going into a territory. And yeah, you had to talk and deal with uh, the promoter of that territory. And it was a small bullshit kind of a story. There was kind of a quick roulette of what storyline you were to unlock and, and, and take when you're in that territory. You had no control over it. It was just kind of a random thing, which really stunk. At the very least, they should have let you choose which storyline you wanted for, what, for your own amusement. Not for it to be so random. But at any rate... You'd start off as a jobber, and you'd be fighting other jobbers. But they know, like, you're going to be one of the guys, so we're going to have you fight some of the lesser dudes. And I like that idea that you would start off, and here's my fictitious wrestling game. You start off trying to get into the business, and, it, and maybe it's akin to the old days uh, where there were territories. And, and whether you want to split it up, Legends of Wrestling, how did that go? There was, like, what, there was the... The, there was the Pacific area, you know, you had Washington State, Oregon, California, and maybe maybe Nevada, whatever. You had the Southwest, might have hit through Texas. Maybe you had the Rocky Mountain region, you had the Plains, the Midwest, the Southeast, the Northeast. You know, you had regions. And maybe even if you were to break it down further from there, like, where do you want to start? What state, what, you know, hey, okay, because I'm in the U.S., I'm going to be greedy and say you start in the U.S. It can be regional, you know. Maybe this game can have a, a sort of, uh, well, no, fuck it. If you want to start in Japan, start in Japan. I don't give a shit. Why not? I'm just using the U.S. as, as an example because that's what I know. I guess, you know, to have all 50 states represented individually on a smaller scale might be a little less. So maybe, yeah, you need to start in a region. You start in a region, and, okay, well, you got good upside. You, you kind of choose how you want your wrestler to be. Along the way, I'm not big on DLC, downloadable content. Like, oh, brand new moves are in. Now you can buy a pile driver on, on WWE 2K for a dollar. It's a fucking pile driver. It should be a standard move. It should be a standard move. Like, I don't know if that's how it is, but I did see on my Xbox Gold on my live account or whatever, I saw, ooh, you know, new moveset, purchase here, what, purchase new, like, unlocking back in the day was a bitch, now we have to purchase this shit, you greedy fucks, at any rate, you would have the basis of your guy, and let's just say for argument's sake, this game, because you can't have everything locked in the way it is, you, you can't have an undertaker, you can have an undead kind of a guy, you can have a Hulk Hogan kind of a patriotic sort of character, but it can't be their likeness. The, the, the guy can't dress the same and use a tombstone. Just can't. Just can't. You know, the, this other guy, he can't rip the shirt off, have the handlebar mustache, call everybody brother. And I'm more of, I'm more of the thinking, this game doesn't really need much for voiceover. I don't think so. Uh, I, I almost think it would ruin it. Because who would do the announcing? Michael Cole? Well, he's WWE. And sorry if I don't know the guys from Ring of Honor or Impact Wrestling or whatever, even the shit over in Japan. I don't know if, if they're using, you know, uh, English-speaking 
commentators, I'm, I'm not sure. So sorry about that if I'm not that tuned in. Just trying to pitch a great game idea here. And yes, it mixes in with wrestling, so this As I Sit Here podcast could kind of go both ways, giggity. But I would enjoy it thoroughly if... You don't need commentary. I think you can do well enough in a video game, a wrestling game, without commentary. Maybe just a few bland, you know, pile driver. Keep it simple to where maybe maybe it's akin to like... Uh, remember the old WWF arcade game? Uh, what is it? Was it Superstars? No, Superstars was the first one. Damn it. I have it on an emulator. Let me check real quick. Let me check. Let me check. It was WrestleFest. That's what it was. WrestleFest. Where you had the Royal Rumble uh, and Saturday Night's Main Event where you would go for the tag team straps. The belts, the titles, the championships. Yeah. They don't like using the word straps or belts in the Federation anymore. Title. Championship. Uh, at any rate, you would... That arcade game. There would along the way be like, Jake the Snake, DDT, you know, just a shitty little 16-bit kind of voice saying a certain move along the way. And yeah, that's fine. You can go about it that way just to keep it eh, a little toned down. But when you go to build your wrestler, let's just say that nobody in this game ages. And there's a full calendar of shit you can do. Now keep in mind, you're starting as a job or nobody starting in a territory. And you want to build your guy, if you want to build him up to be like a powerhouse, like a Brock Lesnar, and maybe that's too extreme, but you get what I'm saying. Like a Brock Lesnar, a Batista, a big, uh, just a swollen up gym rat, a, a psycho Sid kind of a guy. Maybe you want him to be that kind of big man, like well, a Vader-sized big man. Maybe you want him to be a Kali, like a giant, just a tall bitch that, you know, an impervious kind of dude, an, an Umaga kind of giant. Uh, maybe you want him to be... You know, a Shawn Michaels, Marty Jannetty style. And maybe you want to do a tag team. That's eh, I'm thinking more solo, just to be fair. So here's a flaw already, I admit. Didn't think that far ahead. But if you want to be kind of high flyer and flash and all that stuff, and you could be one of those guys. A technician like a Bret Hart. Uh, maybe you want to be you know, you're just kind of more muscle bound, like a British Bulldog, Davy Boy Smith. Uh, yeah, maybe you want that, uh, eh, you have your options, kind of how you want to build your guy. But that's got to be set from the start. You can't say, well, I want to be a high flyer, and then all of a sudden, you, you know, build your way and start doing choke slams. That just doesn't make sense, you know? So when you initially build your guy, this is the format I want to go down. I want to do power bombs and power slams and, you know, the, those, uh, those the long hanging suplexes, those delayed suplexes that British Bulldog would do, you know, stuff like that. Or you know, I want to be a giant. I want to do big boot and the headbutt, and you know that that bring his head down to my knee and kind of crack it, you know, the the big old skull stomp into the knee. You know, whether you want to be a, a baby face or a heel, that's fine too. Who's are you going to allow eye gouging? Is your guy going to be an eye gouger? Is he going to be a baby face that never cheats? Do you want the feet on the rope? Okay, well that's fine. You can be a you can be a beastly monster. Makes perfect sense. Never cheat and still be a heel. Or you can be the high flyer who is a heel and cheats and pulls the tights and eye gouges, all that stuff. Feet on the ropes. You know you got a manager distracting the ref, etc. But you kind of build the, the blueprint as to what your, your guy is going to be. And you got to work your way through these territories. Now you start off against jobbers and then, haha, each territory has their own kind of, uh, well, their own main eventers, essentially. Kind of like how it was on Legends of Wrestling 2. Uh, in the game, I want it to be a little bit slowed down. I don't want a button masher. I don't want a Mortal Kombat kind of... You know, in the squared circle. I don't need hellacious combos and cartoony bullshit physics and crap like that. I don't need that. I want a good wrestling game. Legends of Wrestling 1 was a bit slower, but I did like it because it gave you the chance for a good paced out match. And you could go to your high spots. You could get a guy dizzy, dazed, you know, pick him up so you can do something off the top rope while he's still stunned. You know, 
It's not as if you have to whip the living piss out of him for five minutes and then finally a DDT on a chair. Now I can go give him, you know, my move off the top rope that'll finish him. That's a little too extreme for me. Keep it simplest. I think a weapon should do a lot of damage in this game. Uh, eye gouging at the very least should, should stun, if not so much hurt. But, you know, shit like that. Also, what I really want to incorporate with this just, and this is all ideas, don't get me wrong, is the idea is not to essentially just win all your matches, but to put on a good match. You have to be able to go out there and put together something good. If all you're doing is squash matches, I want to build a giant. Okay, you build up a giant, that's your superstar, your wrestler, right? You build him up, and all you're doing is squash matches, would that really work? I mean, you'd have to be doing some kind of unique things. Otherwise, even the regional crowd would kind of get bored with it. So you have to do some variety. Maybe you have a manager. Maybe each region has its selection of managers. Um, and maybe it's like, okay, well, there, there's male managers, there's female managers. There are baby faces, uh, and there are heel managers. So, you know, things that would fit to what you're looking to do. Or maybe you get to alter. You know, I like this guy... But let's say you want him to be bald and black with a couple of tattoos and he wears shades and all this stuff. His mentality is the same. But maybe you change up his attire. I'll allow that. That's fine. Because let's just say you get through this territory while well, i got to take my manager with me. And you know, maybe that costs you something. Uh, maybe that costs you, I don't know, experience points if we're going to go somewhat RPG style. Or maybe that really drops your popularity in the upcoming region, so you have to fight a lot more jobbers and put on far better matches because you're bringing this manager with you. Uh, maybe he's not liked there. He or she is not liked there, or whatever. The case. They don't know who, let's say it's a valet, they don't know who she is, and they don't buy into it. Because each territory is different, mind you. Uh, from listening to podcasts that, you know, in interviews that I... That I tend to enjoy, whether it's on the Steve Austin show, or whether it's on the Ross Report, shit like that. They interview all kinds of guys, and they'll say, what worked in Memphis didn't work in Louisiana. If we would try to do the exact same angle, the exact same story, it just wouldn't work. Or, this territory back in the day was so big on the entrances. Uh, this territory was well known for, for people getting juice, getting bladed up, bleeding, in the main events, and you know, the cage matches were brutal in this territory. Tag teams were great in this region. I want that to be true on this game, too, because each place should have their own niche, their own kind of thing that they like more so than any other place. Now, sure, everybody loves a cage match, but maybe a specific region, I don't know, maybe they do it better. I don't know, it, it could all be variable shit. And this is, a, you're, not even, you're not even hitting the big times yet. Let's just say that there are... Excuse me, a little burp there. Let's just say that there are, and let's go back to kind of the Monday Night Wars. You had the Federation, which was the top dog. You had WCW slash NWA, however you view it. And you had ECW, which, in that late 90s television push of wrestling, those were the big three, and it's not even close. Now, sure, there was Japan. Like I said, I'm from the States, uh, so I'm a little geared towards that. I know Japan's... They love wrestling. They're so huge. You I'm just I'm, I'm not educated in it, sadly. I'm just not. I don't want to discredit it. I just don't know enough about it. Oh, and by the way, Canada, they love wrestling too. Outside of the Stampede, do they even do wrestling at the Stampede anymore? Is it a big deal? I, I'm, not, I'm not sure, honestly. Sadly, I'm not sure and I don't know. But just being within the States, let's say... No, I'll be totally fair. Let's say... That the big three promote. Let's let's even go four. We can widen this out. The big promotions. There's one in Canada. There's one in the U.S. There's one in Mexico, for the for the lucha, right? And there's one in Japan. I think that covers pretty well. Nothing against England. Okay, shit. If we need a fifth one, we got one there. And I guess each each country could have their own major promotion that everybody wants to go to. That is your goal: is to go there and put on the good matches and be the guy, the face of that company. And maybe from there, uh, that's a, that's, I'm fast-forwarding too much. But let's say, going back to the U.S., <laughs> uh, 
uh, each territory has their own niche. They like tag teams. They like ca uh, cage matches, etc. Let's just say you start off on the West Coast, California, right? You're in L.A. That's where your guy's based out of. And let's just say that you are a you're a heel from Hollywood, right? You're just you know, and you you wanna you wanna build up your wrestling career and help you you know get on the silver screen and all this stuff. And let's just say you got a hot valet, but she's a heel too. So okay, let, let's say you build up and you get your way through the jobbers, however long that takes. You need to put on good matches. Let's say that you're kind of a a, a, a technician but a heel because you're clever at how you're able to get away with the eye gouge, the pull of the tights to get that three. Uh, getting your feet on the ropes to get that pin. Now, like I said, I don't want this to be a button masher by any means. That being the case, it's got to be more, like I said, strategic and you want to put on a good match. You can't win every match with a pull of the tights. You got to have your finisher. Uh, you know, maybe you, maybe your, your valet chick distracts the ref you get in a low blow or an eye gouge or whatever, then you hit him with the finisher and it's clean in the middle of the ring or whatever. Let's let's go back to let's say uh, uh, Macho King and Sensational Queen Sherry, right? The loaded purse, right? She's distracting the ref. Somehow she's able to see. You know the the purse is laying over on the side. Savage comes, picks up the purse, wham! Hits whoever hits Beefcake over the head with it. Tosses the purse back outside the ring. He goes up, hits the big elbow. Maybe not even hits the elbow, but gets the three count. Because he's out cold, middle of the ring, it's clean. Well, clean in the sense that his feet aren't on the ropes and he doesn't need to pull the tights. Maybe he goes for the elbow and there's the three as well. But, yeah, you do cheat, but you get that perfect, you know, middle of the ring pin. There's no feet on the ropes. You can't always get away with that. You can't always do No, you can do that to establish... Yeah, I'm a cheating some bitch, and I'm going to bend the rules. If the ref don't see it, I'm going to get away with it, and I'm going to become your champion, the people of Los Angeles. I'm going to be your champion. You're you're going to come see me. Hey, love me or hate me. I'm the guy that represents this area. I'm the guy. I am Mr. L.A., Mr. Hollywood, right? Oh, this is going to be so damned easy to become champion here, and I, I'll bet you, you know, it's been blowing up all over social media. My phone's been ringing. I'm getting messages left and right. Hollywood wants me, but I still got a little bit more to do in the ring. I like where this is going. You know, use that. And, and sure, that this is for a game that I'm saying doesn't need a whole hell of a lot of voiceover dialogue. You know, this that's how you can kind of get it lined up in your own set. You know, now, now maybe there's just a shit ton of options. Like maybe you change your... Maybe there's just a list, and I haven't thought this out either. You know, you want your technician heel with your valet heel manager, well, valet manager, same, you know, just gender specific, I suppose, um, but your heel valet, and you're a cohesive unit. Cheat to win because you'll get the winning purse, right? You, you get the higher money. I mean, like I said, let's go back to you know, 70s and 80s wrestling mindset, where it's real, you know? Nothing wrong with that. I love that shit, to my disclaimer. But, you know, the, if you win, you get more money. You work your way up the card. But let's just say, hey, Ric Flair was a great heel, wasn't he? Probably one of the best wrestlers of all time. I'd say he's in pretty much everybody's top five. As a heel, he could lose a match and still look like, you know, not a million bucks, a billion bucks. Let's not let's not cheapen the man's legacy. Ric Flair could look like a billion dollars, let alone a million. Shit. But you would need to do that. Put on good matches. Know when to have you know, oh I, I better I better blade in this match. I better show some color. And the way I guess there'd be ways to do that. Whereas, okay, if, if the promoter, and this could be bland, like the promoter doesn't even have to be anything major, it could just be a text box. Could be a character, just for the regions, I suppose it would make sense that each region has a specific promoter, and they're not biased, they're not going to be all Mr. McMahon kind of thing, they're just, they are the promoter, and they're saying, you know, well, you need to improve on this, you need to do this, you need to do this. And maybe through text box dialogue, if you go back to, if you remember the game Fallout 2, where you had options to click on 
what you want your character to say. Let's go that route. You know, well, I'm a heel, I need to do this. Well, okay, if you want to do this, you need to show me you can do this. You know, uh, like, we need to put on a good show here in Frisco because this crowd is hot and, that you know, it's... You need to stand out because you're good in the mid-card, but, you know, the champion, the guys that are higher up the card than you, they're still putting on better matches. You've got some good heat, but you need to do a little bit more. And maybe it's suggestive. Maybe, you know, they, they tell you those kinds of, okay, well, this match, let's say there's a couple options, oh, but it, the promoter already says it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one match, and it's just straight-up rules, you know? It's like, well, okay, I'm a heel, if I have to, you know, do I cheat? What can I do? Blah blah blah. Maybe, maybe I'll get some. Maybe I'll get some color, or maybe I'll, you know, color him up. And hey, because this is kind of a simulator, and you're you're meant to be the guy. Don't get me wrong. If you're working your way up the card, if you have a little discussion with the guy you're about to have a fight with, like, hey man, get some color for me here. You know, well, what does that do for him? As opposed to what does that do for you? It makes you look like a heel because. If you're, if you're valet, if she distracts the ref and you hit the guy with the chair, or you hit him with the bell, you know, you're both out there to put on a good match. Yes, you want to win, etc. And the focus should mainly be about you. But it's about putting on the good match. What do you do to help advance and to find a... It can be known, all right, that the West Coast crowd, uh, they like a lot of flash. It's Like I said, it's Hollywood, it's L.A. They like a lot of flash. Maybe you're... End Maybe they're the one big on the entrances, or just the, you know, kind of the characters and stuff like that. Maybe they're not so concerned about, he's a good in-ring wrestler. Maybe just the, the flash, the, uh, the pyro, the laser lights and all that stuff, and maybe uh, the music and stuff like that. Now, granted, with today's video game technology, you could insert your own, uh, put in a CD, you know, and, and have, have your system... Rip the songs off of that CD. And, like, you want track number four to be your entrance song. Eh, okay. That's fine. I suppose. Yeah, why not? You can do it on sports games. You score a goal in FIFA 15, and you can have Death Clock playing. That's cool. I'm down with that. Same thing with the wrestling thing. Uh, your entrance, you know, granted you're, you're working your way up the card and it's territory, so maybe you don't have all the pyro and the techno, uh, the... the the laser light show shit. But yeah, you know, you got a hot song, whatever. And sure, the song almost doesn't matter. It's just, it's the recognizable part of you. It's not, the, the game doesn't need to recognize, oh, you're playing something from Flowrider. Oh, the people love Flowrider. I'm, I'm not, I don't want it to be that damn specific. But your own entrance thing, uh, maybe they like that. Like, uh, is there something weird to your entrance or your attire, your character? Do you always taunt? Do you always, you know, uh, give that sort of feedback to the fans? Do, are, are you looking for a response? You know, do you goad them into, yeah, I'm going to cheat, I'm going to cheat, I'm going to cheat. Maybe that's what the West Coast crowd is like. Whereas, if you go over towards kind of the Rocky Mountains, maybe they like more, of has some high impact. They like the high spot, the power moves and everything. So you can scale back so a little bit on your entrance and your, you don't need to, need to goad them. You don't need to, yeah, I'm going to sneak up behind him. Remember uh, Bob Backlund? He would do that kind of, I'm going to sneak up behind him and give him the cross face chicken wing when, when he would kind of telegraph what he was going to do. And sometimes the crowd would ramp up and, oh, look out, Bret Hart, look out, he's going to give me the cross face. You know, let's say that the Rocky Mountain crowd, they like the high spots. They like that, oh, that DDT right there. That was well-timed. Boom, that was good. But, of course, you got to sell it. Or if you delivered it, you have to capitalize on it and stay working on the head and the neck. This is a video game. I'm not saying that, you know, the, the whole ooh, concussions and stuff like that. It's a video game, so that's fine. Pile drivers, DDTs, maybe a chair shot when your valet is with you and she distracts the ref and you're able to, in a big-time match... Boom! There you go, a DDT on a chair. That'll end the match real quick. And let's just say that your finishing move is, uh, well, let's just go simple and kind of give it a ravishing Rick Rude neck breaker, right? The Rude Awakening. Let's say that's the finisher. Perfect. You kind of got an idea of what this guy is. You, you know his finisher. You kind of you got an idea of a look. You see where I'm going, though. This is all good. 
Now, how do you employ all of these things? Let's just say you go to lock up. Now, I need to refer back to PS2, SmackDown vs. Raw 2010. Referring back to that, when you would have like a hardcore match, when you would go beneath the apron to go grab out a weapon under the ring, remember when that little, uh, that, that icon wheel would show up? Do you want to, you know, I think it would use like the right analog stick. And you would rotate it, you know, like a clock. 12 o'clock, you grab a chair. 3 o'clock, you grab a table. 6 o'clock, you grab a ladder. 9 o'clock, whatever, you're grabbing a, a baseball bat, a sledgehammer, Triple H stuff, right? You could have more than that, though. But let's just say that this, that this wheel... And I know other games use a Grand Theft Auto V, when you want to switch weapons, you hold down this button, and then your weapon wheel shows up. Well, what do you want to go? Want to use your fully autos? You want to go to your pistol? You want to go to your your launchers and all that stuff? You get what I'm saying. Uh, that's where you would kind of go through, and the, the flow of the match could take place there. Whereas, like, if you go to tie up, do you give yourself up in a reversal? where you go to throw him to the corner, into the turnbuckle, but you let him reverse, throw you in, and you take a little bit of a beating for a few minutes, you sit down and you sell for a little bit, you know, maybe there's a, you hold this button to sell, and you, you know, you want to bring up your, 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 I guess, your move wheel, I guess you would say, and the tie up, get the advantage. Okay, then from there, if you want to use it like SmackDown, you hold up and hit Circle, and that's a suplex. Uh, you tie up, you get the advantage, you hold down and hit Circle, that's a simple, like a judo hip toss. Left in Circle is this. Whatever the case may be. It can all be worked on, but maybe go back to Legends of Wrestling. Whereas, if you're tied up and then you press this, it's uh, you got him in a suplex. You're ready for the, you know, the, the arm draped over your neck. Or if you lock up and you hit this button, head between the legs, pile driver style, could turn it into, could turn it into a power bomb. You lock up, you hit this button, and you go for around the waist, maybe a belly to belly. You lock up and you hit this button, and you got him launch position for a body slam, power slam, snake eyes, you know, on the top rope, uh, or just a flat, you know, a gorilla press like Ultimate Warrior, and drop him flat stomach behind you. You know, I, I liked that format. That was good because it really opened up your move set. And of course, from behind. You know, if if you win the advantage, you slip behind. Okay, you got him in like a full Nelson. You can do a lot there. Just a what is that? A dragon suplex? Or uh, remember when Bubba Ray Dudley would do the Bubba Bomb? You could do this. So there's the full Nelson lock. There's just the waist lock if you want to do belly to backs. You know, just kind of like that that simple wrestling takedown. Uh, then there was kind of, boy, I forget. <laughs> I forget the others. But you get what I'm saying. That game had a lot of good ideas as far as just the work in the ring and the moves that you wanted to execute. But using your using your wheel kind of starts off how things go. Do you take advantage in the lockup? Do you give yourself up? Do you want to throw him into the ropes, or do you want to be thrown into the ropes? Or have it be reversed, where you start with something and let him reverse it. Whereas you kind of show, alright, this guy, you know, reverses my shit. He, he wrestles me really well. There's so many avenues you can go with this, and that's just in the ring. Now, sure, if it's a hardcore match to whatever degree, yeah, you reach under the ring, yeah, use the same thing for the weapon wheel. What do you wrote to uh, this? The one, that, the, the weapon at 8 o'clock, whatever, the kendo stick. I'm going to use that now. I'll pull that out from under the ring. And as, as things go, the better match that you put on, you don't always need to get blood. You don't always need to cheat to win. Like I said, feet on the ropes and pulling the trunks and all that. You don't always need to do that. If you're the heel, like I said, if you're the technician heel with the Root Awakening finisher with your heel valet, you have to cheat to establish that you are sort of the chicken shit, but look at me how great I am heel. Yeah, you got to get heat. But you also have to know when to flip it back and, and have the other guy get his time, too. Because once he starts taking advantage, here comes the, uh, you know, she jumps up on the apron, distracts the ref, there's the low blow, and you start taking advantage from there, and the last minute of the match is all you, and damn, the other guy almost had it, right? There, there's got to be... 
a bit of a momentum meter, uh, you know, kind of like the, the crowd at the edge of their seat type thing. Win or lose, the crowd can be amped up and say that was a hell of a match. Whether you win or lose, doesn't matter. But the object is you go from territory to territory, from whatever country you're in, until eventually you work your way up to that big... And, you, of course, you have to become champion of all these places. You have to. I mean, if, you, if you're the champion out on the West Coast, if you're the, the, the Pacific champion, but then you get over to Denver, Colorado, in the Rocky Mountains, and you can't win the championship there, well, eh, maybe they say you're just you're not good at... Well, in order to get to the big U.S. promotion... You need to win all the regional titles. You have to. That should be a requirement. Now, on the RPG element side of things, uh, yeah, maybe maybe along the way you can start unlocking more moves. Because your whole move set should not be available to you right away, I don't think. All of your basics for whatever you're trying to... The technician, the giant, the big man, the high flyer, whatever, whatever other categories we need, the brawler, all that... Hey, maybe it's just strictly hardcore. You know, maybe you're more of a Sabu. Uh, Abdullah the Butcher, I suppose, is too unique of a character. Because that's just nothing but bloodbaths. And sure, Sabu's a very unique character. But, you know, it, it's... I, I guess he's the product of ECW and all that fame. But, without using the chair on somebody for the triple jump moonsault, he just uses it at a, as a prop to jump off of. And I think that's fine, because that opens up his moveset. He doesn't need to do, you know, uh, Van Daminators and Van Terminators, you know, the way RVD would. Doesn't have to, but you can use the chair as a prop, as, as a form. Or what about you set the chair open up, you know, like it's just sitting perfectly, and you do that drop toe hold. Well, hey, ref, I gave him a drop toe hold. He set up the chair, I gave him a drop toe hold. That's his own fault. I did not hit him with the chair. He pulled the buckle... Uh, he, he pulled the padding off of the turnbuckle, I threw him into it, that's his fault, you know, I reversed the throw, that's on him, I didn't, you know, if you pick up the bell and you're caught hitting the guy with it, yeah, that's a DQ straight up, but there's a lot of variables you can do with this, I think that there's technology around where all of this can happen into a game, and just, it creates a better atmosphere, it's not just button mash and, and play, you know, random people online with your hacked fucking character, you know, and it's just button mashing. It just becomes button mashing at that point. No, this is more simulation, put on a good match. Work your way through territories. Each territory has their own niche. If you want to bring your manager valet along, uh, you know, place to place, maybe that's a negative, maybe that's a positive. Maybe they kind of think that, well, you know, you're sitting with our same format. It's like, maybe they think the chick is hot, and they kind of like her bad, uh, you know, her bad side. And maybe it's, you know, like, uh, you go down south, like Texas, maybe the Texas region. They kind of dig her, whereas L.A., nah, they didn't so much. The Rocky Mountains hated her. So you were at a disadvantage there as far as trying to work your way up the card. Uh, or maybe you gain less experience to help unlock more moves and stuff like that. That can all be part of it. And along the way, maybe, you know how Triple H along the way, he just became known as, well, he uses that sledgehammer. Maybe along the way you can bring in something like, and something simple, like it could just be a steel chair, or maybe it's just your valet's purse. Maybe that's just a weapon that's associated with you and she always has it. That's a good thing, but using it should be sparingly, you know? It shouldn't be all the damn time. And if you're going to jump around, you know, Town to town, as it was back in the day, you know, maybe, yeah, San Francisco, you use it because the promoter's telling you you need to do something here. Use that and bust open the baby face. Now there's color. And maybe if he's able to come back and get the win on you, all right, it puts him over and it was a great fight. Even though you cheated, you still couldn't win. There's still heat on you and all that. But he still wants the exact revenge because you ripped them open. And, of course, you have to have that psychology, too, of... You know, you can't just have one fight with the guy. You have to at least have that that series of three at least. Because give, take, then what happens? You know, you win one, you lose one, what does the third one happen? If you win two, that third one doesn't really mean anything, I don't think. You lose the first two, yeah, if you win, I, I can see that. 
but if it's in tournament style towards a title, because, it, okay, in the NFL that happens, where division rivals play each other, well, twice automatically, maybe they meet up for that third time in the playoffs. It could be a sweep, or it could be, hey, you beat us twice in the regular season, we got you in the playoffs, when it matters more. Sure, there's that element. If there's a tournament like that that happens in, in the territory, sure, that could be a part of it. But again, this would have to be something that comes up dialogue style with the promoter and with the other guy you're fighting. You know, that has to be something. And if you have a better convincing argument versus who you're fighting, you know, at some point it's just what the promoter says is final. What the promoter says is final. What the promoter says is final. And there's not much retort. You know, there's no way that you're going to be able to to sway his mind. Whatever he says is final. And that works in, this, in reverse, too. If the other guy that you're fighting is just hell-bent on, he doesn't want things to go this way, this way, this way, well, yeah, that's just going to... Yeah, the promoter says that's how it has to be. Sorry, tough tits, that's just how it is. And, sure, going back again... <laughs> You work your way up through a territory, you move on to the next territory. The only way you make it to your country's prime uh, promotion is to, you have to win every world championship, all the, the top championship in each region before you make it big to the top promotion. And again, there, you're starting from the bottom up. You're not a jobber. I mean, you're known. But maybe you got to fight lesser guy. Well, if it's the top promotion, there are no jobbers. There are no jobbers. Call it the major leagues, right? Call it the big leagues. There are no jobbers. You're working with mechanics. You're working with veterans. You're working with guys that have been there. And like I said, because this game can't have, well, the U.S. promotion, you can't have an Undertaker. You can't have a mean Mark Calloway. You can't. You can have you know, sort of an undead, maybe he's a Frankenstein lookalike, well, I don't, maybe you're paying royalties to Universal Studios then, but to have that sort of character, fine, uh, I get that, you know, where he, he, maybe he doesn't sell, or he doesn't feel pain, or whatever the case is, but the character's over, and like I said, maybe you have a patriotic Hulk Hogan-ish character, who doesn't swear and drop the N-bomb, that's yeah, a side joke, forget it, it's topical right now, Bad circumstance and whatever. Stupid on his part, but eh, I don't think it was malicious. Anyway, uh, you have that patriotic character who everybody loves. Everybody loves. This this other guy, the dead man I was talking about, you know, he's intriguing. He's over. And the people, you know, they're scared of him. And you, maybe you have these recognizable kind of characters. And yeah, the, there could be a, a kind of a bio for each guy. You know, in the major promotion, hell, even in the t even in the the territories, there could be these guys, and maybe there is move up and move down. Like maybe a guy that you fought back in L.A. Uh, during your first uh, your first promotion, maybe you meet up with him later on in New York in the Northeast, and it's like, oh, they've had history before, and they had a hellacious cage match in San Francisco, blah blah blah, and because you weren't able to cheat, you the the technical heel. Because you weren't able to cheat, it was a cage match, and and the valet couldn't fit her purse in through the cage, whatever, you lost your ass to this guy. So now that you're fighting him in New York, okay, there's bad blood. And maybe, just along the way, maybe you fought somebody in Texas, and along the way, you make your way to the big promotion in the U.S. Wherever they're based out of, I don't care, it's just, they own it all, so to speak, you know? But they are the big leagues. And let's just say somebody you fought in Texas is they also work their way up. And maybe you have more encounters with them, as, as a, you know, let alone cross-promotion, but they're in the big time with you. And maybe they've been, like I said, the, the, the people, the characters will not age. You know, just be, you know, eh, it's, I, I don't know, maybe that takes away from it. Uh, because, like I said, if you're going to have a Hulk Hogan character, a, a Undertaker character, I mean, in real life, yeah, they age, but... To keep the mentality that these are the guys in the big promotion here in this country, they don't really move. Unless you stipulate something where, like, oh, let's put it over where he gets injured. And he's out for a few months. And maybe he works some small territories on his rehab, 
and all that stuff, and he's building up momentum. I don't know. I don't know. That, that might be too far. But the guys that are in, the, the main eventers, and let's just say if the roster size in the big promotion is 50, I would say the top 10 never leave that big time. Now, maybe they go to other countries' big promotions and fight some of their top 10. That's fine. I got no problem with that. But then again, if they win the Japanese world title from the big promotion, you're stuck in Japan till you lose. You know what I mean? Because it happens all the time. I mean, you look, Vader, Dr. Death, Steve Williams, there were guys that just, they went over to Japan and they were gods. So why not have the same thing be in video games? Why not have it that way? Whereas, like, sure, the U.S. patriotic, the Hulk Hogan, uh, you know, I have to use that name. You know, just, let's just say that the Hulk Hogan guy goes to Canada, wins their world title from their guy. Holy shit. Okay, well, what does that do? He's got to stay there till he loses that Canadian title. You know, you shouldn't, I think it would be too selfish for this game to be... You know, you have, and let's just say, you have the U.S. title, you have the Canadian title, the Mexican title, the Japanese title, the English title, or the U.K. title, I'm sorry. It's, I understand Ireland, you love the fuck out of wrestling, just, that, that's, they, they call all of it England, right? I could be way off, whatever. The white backdrop with the red cross in it, that, that's, that's unified of all those islands, correct? Scotland, Ireland... All that, that's all included, even with, you know, like, London, England, that's all the same. Forgive me if I'm way off on that, but you get what I'm saying. That whole area, those northern European islands, <laughs> uh, they have their world title, and you take that. So, okay, it would be selfish for one person to have all of those titles. It would. But let's just say, if you were to win the U.S. title, but then you, you know something starts up and you start a program with the Canadian champion. Now, if you win the Canadian title, you have to forfeit the U.S. title back, and maybe a tournament starts, whatever. But because you won, you can't hold them all. You can't hold them all. You can hold several belts within the same promotion, within the same region or within the same big league. So you can have all of the Los Angeles titles. You could be a, a co-tag champion and have their their television championship, their intercontinental. I mean, that's a little extreme. But, you know, when you go on, you, know, you would have to lose those belts in order to... Loser leaves town, how they did it back in the day, right? Loser leaves town. Oh, shit, you lose it all. Uh, but even still, I don't. It wouldn't be right for you. And let's just. I'm using the federation as an example. It would be dumb if you had a intercontinental champion who's also holding the world championship. They didn't do that for WrestleMania six. They had Warrior drop the intercontinental title, and there was a tournament held. So yeah, you wouldn't be able to do that. Again, that would kind of have to be the promoter saying to some degree, "Hey, you have this belt." and you've been putting on good matches, it's time for you to step up. You know, you went from television champion to, whatever, intercontinental champion. Now we need you to be world champion. And, well, okay, if it's regional, excuse me, keep it in the States. Uh, maybe, you know, Pacific Coast champion. Like, the region itself would be its own... That would be its world champion. That would be its top championship. You would have the... Uh, and Oh, and that's even better. Because based on how big the region is, you could have other titles like that. Where, let's just say this Pacific region, this promotion, is made up of, let's just go California, Oregon, and the state of Washington. Now, in that promotion, in the Pacific uh, region... You can have a Washington State Champion, an Oregon State Champion, and a California State Champion. But the Pacific Coast Champion trumps all of them. See what I mean? So you can have several belts within each promotion. But the regional champion, 
is the guy of that region, obviously. He can't be the you know the Pacific the Pacific region world champion. I, I don't know. It just sounds too many world champions. You know, well, like, like I said, that's why I'm trying to keep it simple where the U.S. champion, Hulk Hogan, versus the Canada champion, Bret Hart. Okay. Or Bret Hart, the Canada champion, versus Eddie Guerrero, the Mexico champion. Or Eddie Guerrero, the Mexican uh, champion, versus, yeah, well, Yokozuna was billed as Japanese. Uh, Jushin Liger. Or is he Mexican? Shit, I don't really know. Sorry, I'll just use Vader. <laughs> Vader is the Japanese champion. You can do all those things. But, you know, the, the, the United States World Heavyweight Champion? Like, yeah, that sounds a little too weird. So, I mean, I guess it would all be regional. You know, you'd be the, you'd be the United States Champion. You'd be the Canadian Champion, the Mexican Champion, the English Champion, the Japanese Champion, the Australian Champion. Fuck, let's throw them in there. That's, I'm sorry I forgot about you for so long. Which can include New Zealand, just as that part of, you know, that region. Well, the Polynesian Islands. Aren't they big in a wrestling? Well, the Samoans, at the very least. And those are Pacific Islands. But, you know, maybe they're a part of the Pacific region. Okay, that's fair. I mean, shit, that's part of the real deal. Pat Patterson would talk about that all the time. When he was wrestling in Frisco. He said those Samoans would get so fucking red-hot pissed off. And they would make their way down. If he was beaten up on uh, uh, Peter Mayavir or the Great High Chief, something like that. Because remember, he's a French-speaking motherfucker from Quebec, and he's over there in Frisco where there's a lot, you know, hell of a lot of more Samoans than there are French-speaking, you know, Canadians. He was outnumbered, and the heat was tremendous. So why not, yeah, why not have that? Hawaiians, they're part of the Pacific uh, region. You know, Fiji, if you want to bring in some snookas, right? Why not? I had the, the, the Pacific Islands and all that shit. That can be part of the Pacific region. That's cool. I'm down with that. The Russians, why not? Have that be a part of it. Alaska, though. Does Alaska... Mm, it used to be Russian. It touches Canada, but it is part of the United States. I Whatever. That's... That might be splitting a lot more hairs than needed. But for need be, that'll be part of the Pacific region, just, you know. So the Alaskan state champion as well, the Hawaiian state champion. You got five right there. Damn. Each region could have its own state champions. The Northeast would be so jammed. I mean, Connecticut, Vermont, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Maine. I mean, that's a lot of shit, you know. That is a lot. But, you could, you could. So technically, you would have, you would, you could have 50 champions. Wow. I mean, that's a lot if you think about it. And sure, it's divided up between how many territories, so I guess it keeps it a little bit fresh. And it can kind of help somebody else coming into a region to kind of say, Hey, you, hey, uh, yeah, Vermont State Champion, fuck you, I want your title. You know, we used to do battle back in Michigan or in Indiana, whatever the case may be, you know, we're going to get it on. So technically, yeah, that, that would be a lot. That's 50 right there. Now, Canada, you have far few provinces than the, than the U.S. does states. Mexico, sadly, I don't, I don't know you well enough. But, I mean, to do that and to keep it fair, but the regional champion would be the guy. The Northeast, the Midwest, the Plains, the Rockies... Uh, the, you know, the Pacific region, the Southwest, uh, the South, the Southeast. You know, however, well, that's just, I have not drawn a map to this, but you get what I'm saying. You want kind of as many as possible, so you can kind of divide all 50 states somewhat evenly enough. The Ohio Valley, that could be some, well, OVW, isn't that what it is? Ohio Valley Wrestling? Yeah, the Ohio Valley, the Mid-Atlantic... That used to be a thing, and that's kind of your Tennessee, Kentucky area, right? Memphis. So yeah, the more the more regions slash territories you have, the easier it is to divide up. You know, well, this place has, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten state champions, like the Northeast. You know, and this place only has, you know, four. Eh, so yeah, you kind of have to see how much you can build off of this. 
and this is just, these are just mechanics. This is just how, how you fucking progress and go through. But at any rate, you go through the regions, then you get called up to the big leagues. You know, that country's main promotion. And it can be just this simple, unless there's legalities behind the name, the United States Wrestling Promotion, or the United States Wrestling Federation, the United States Wrestling League, you know, Major League Wrestling of the United States. United States Major League Wrestling, I don't know. You'd have to find names that, obviously enough, do not counteract with something that already exists. Existed, excuse me. You know, the Championship Wrestling Alliance. Maybe that existed, but, eh, well, Alliance. Eh, I don't know, forget that. <laughs> a lot of names can float around. But as I sit here, this would be a pretty good fucking idea. The object is, you want to build your guy up, and eh, you get experience points and shit like that, how over you are. You unlock some moves, maybe you unlock uh, a little bit more laser lighting for your entrance. I've already said on uh, a previous uh, As I Sit Here podcast, it was called Less Is More. And I was mainly aiming this at the Federation, well, WWE, the former Federation. Too many guys have pyro and all this shit. I think a lot of that shit should be downscaled and only for, you know, the big events. And again, in this game, each region has their own big event, their own WrestleMania, as it were. And it's, that that can stay, no, it can be randomized at the start of the game. Like, you build a character, it, it's not going to be cookie cutter, where if you build a giant who starts in, you know, the Philadelphia area, that doesn't mean that the Philadelphia area's main WrestleMania is always going to be in the month of June. No, it can all be random. It can all be randomized from the start. Or if you want to set it to a certain thing, I guess that's cool too. If you want to edit their sort of calendar as to when their big payday is. Another thing to it, too, maybe you are so good in your in a specific territory, you never see that uh, you, you never see their WrestleMania, that territory. Maybe another promotion comes along and says, dude, we can give you, you know, bring your valet along, and that's fine, no penalty there. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna pay you this much, and whether it's experience points or maybe money does come into play, I don't know if I want to use. And I, I'm not saying real money. I'm saying in the game, like uh, you know, depending on how much you know, how high up the card you are, depends on how how much pay you get. Obviously, winner's purse and all that shit. Uh, you know, do you get a better car to get you to the events faster? Or are you more fatigued? I don't know if I want to go that crazy with it. But let's just use experience points for unlocking move sets, clothing, uh, shit like that. Laser lights for your entrance, volume for your entrance music, whatever the case may be. Um, but let's just say another promotion says, dude, we're going to give you, you know, for the first six months, we're going to give you five times the experience each match. Regardless of how it turns out, you're going to get a five times multiplier. And let's, okay, let's just keep it simple where we kind of started. Uh, you haven't made it to Los Angeles' WrestleMania yet, but the Rocky Mountain region, Denver, Colorado, is coming to you and saying, we're going to give you a, a five times multiplier. We want you that badly. Well, do you give up the possible big payday that could be uh, for LA's WrestleMania, or do you jump and take that sort of contract deal right there and go to the Rocky Mountain region to get that guaranteed five months, or sorry, six months of, of a five times multiplier. Yeah, there's a lot you can incorporate here. It, it's kind of RPG. It's still a wrestling game. It's a little bit political, maybe problem solving, depending on, you know, how the promote. Like I said, the promoter is the promoter. That's not going to change, but his mindset needs to change based on what's happening in the territory. Uh, now, understandably, if the territory, like I said, is just big on tag teams, you know, going in this as a solo, I can't use tag teams because I haven't thought about that, so I'm open to uh, criticism and discussion on it. But let's just say they're big into, um, man, I'm really drawing a, brain, a blank here because I'm about to hit one hour on my recording. <laughs> 
when I looked at the time, it really hit me. But let's just say that the region you're in, well, the entrance. They like the, uh, maybe it's streamers, and, you know, like Japan does. And I love that. that. That's really cool. But, like, they throw streamers at you, and laser lights, and the loud music, and all that stuff. And there's the flash, the uh, the character, the, the, the entrance. We'll just go with the entrance for now. Simple enough. You don't have to be a huge character, but, you know, you come out on a motorcycle or something, or you come in a limo, like JBL or something like that. They're big on the entrances. Well, okay, that promoter will always know, okay, the entrances are big, the entrances are big. That will never change region by region. You know, just certain, that should be definitely locked in, that should not be randomized. When their WrestleMania is, should be random. Because then at the very least, like, you know what region has what, uh, as far as what they like. Uh, shit, maybe that should be random too, just to be fair. That should be random. Man, I don't know. Because that's not exactly true. See, but this this requires more thought. Because if, if everything is cookie cutter in that regard, where every promoter knows, okay, this region is good for tag teams, this region is good for... They like steel cage matches for, you know, for the big event at the end of the month, or our big bi-monthly pay-per-view as it was. Uh, they like that. They like blood. They like the entrances. This one, you know, whatever they get. If that's cookie cutter, you maybe have to select your path accordingly. But see, that's where I kind of want the randomization of it. Or, or maybe you get that option. And let's just say whatever. Let's just say that there's ten territories and each one has its own niche, you can select which one you get, but of course you're dwindling away the list. You can't keep going, you know, entrance, 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 entrance for each uh, region you go to. So that forces you to kind of, you have to purchase better shit for your entrance. You have to upgrade your moveset because they like the high spots. You have to, you know, uh, upgrade, buy new shit through your experience points, uh, you know, to get that motorcycle or that limo. You need to upgrade, you need to upgrade. It forces you to expand what you are. Because if you're stagnant, you're not going anywhere. You're going to be stuck in one territory, and it's just going to drown itself out. And eventually they're going to say, hey, it's been a year since you've been, you know, in a main event. Like, the crowd's not buying it anymore. They've seen everything you can do, and we can't miss you if you're never gone. You need to go to another territory, but nobody's knocking on your door. Is that a game over? I, I, I don't know if I would go that far. It, maybe there's no game over. Maybe you just need to find a way. The object, I guess, would be to to just go down into the annals as one of the best wrestling, you know, one of the best wrestlers of all time. If you could win every country, well, there's a lot of countries. I understand that, <laughs> but not every country's represented. Uh, represented? They're not all represented. Now, like I said, the English title. Well, shit, I mean, you got Ireland and Scotland, I'm sure they would want their own say. But, you know, well, Canada's one big-ass country. Ah, see, that there's there's a lot of ideas I can get out of this. I'm not sure the Canadian provinces have their own fucking champions. But, ah, damn. See, the provinces are so big, I think that's the problem. So going back to, like, the UK... England, as it were. Well, let me let me bring up a map real quick. I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna try to learn this on the fly myself. Cause where I have a decent idea, uh, give me a little map here. Okay, I see Wales and Birmingham, and that might be. Uh... All right, there's Scotland. There's Ireland. There's Northern Ireland. All right, Wales, right? Welsh, is that where that comes from? I mean, I know the word, I know the verbiage, Welsh. If that's from Wales, I just learned something. Or, like, kind of put two and two together. Whatever. But you get what I'm saying. Scotland would probably want their own title, I'm sure. Northern Ireland would want their own title. Uh, uh, title. Ireland, Ireland would want their own title. Wales would want their own title, and then what, that's England, or would I consider that the UK, or is this all the UK? That's where I was confused earlier, excuse me. Uh, the Isle of Man, do they get a title? See, I don't know these things, that's... 
that's where I'm that's where I need education there not gonna lie not gonna lie Hold on, let me go map of UK literally I'm trying to figure this out right uh, trying to figure this out on the fly now the United Kingdom this this is wow that's a shit picture it's very small Wales Scotland I mean Ireland's over there but it's not a piece of this so I'm guess so the UK is what I picture to be the Brits Scotland obviously is Scottish Ireland Northern Ireland that's Irish clearly Wales Welsh I assume if I got that right if if the uh, if the Brits well okay Great Britain the UK England what the fuck is it I'm, I'm serious here pulling my hair out what's left of it as it's receding but okay maybe if all those areas I forgot where I was going with this maybe all those areas want their own uh, sort of title but all that area all those I uh, you'll Ireland is considered part of what that's they're, they're part of the United Kingdom I don't think they're England but you get what I'm saying I'm confusing myself here Ireland can have its own champion uh, Northern Ireland can have their own champion. Wales can have their own champion. Uh, Scotland can have their own champion. England can have their own champion. And the regional big boy is the UK champion? Does that make sense? I could be wrong on this, but you get what I'm trying to say? My uneducated Yankee ass. Yep, yep, you know. <laughs> Forgot where I was really going. Countries, there's a lot of countries. But if that signifies all one area, in Australia and New Zealand, I know they're separate islands, but I would consider that all one. Like Australia gets there, well, what would I call it then? Because Australia is one thing, New Zealand is totally separate from it. I mean, physically separated from it. They have their own separate flag. But they're, I don't, what would I consider them? The, uh, I mean, geez, that's about as southeast as you can get. But it wouldn't be Australia. There's another good question. Because I'm sure New Zealand would want to be separate from Australia. But then again, Australia has their own uh, regions, right? Of course they do. I just don't know what the hell all of them are. So, let me go back to this. Images. Map of Australia. Not Austria, thank you. Uh, oh, perfect, here we go. <clears throat> Western Australia, Northern Territory, South Australia. Let me zoom in on this. Uh, Capricornia, Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, Tasmania. All right. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. New Zealand is its own separate thing, correct? But what do I call that entire region? Or, map of New Zealand, let me look. Wow, New Zealand kind of has a lot of their own shit, don't they? Holy crap. We got Northland, Auckland, Waikato, the Bay of Plenty, Gisborne, Hawke's Bay. Uh, wow, I did not know this much. Holy shit. Good on you. Taranaki, am I saying that correctly? Holy, there's a lot. Wellington, I know how to say that. Uh, Marlboro, this one, holy shit. Manawatu, Wangan, I, I don't even know. Manawatu, the hyphenated one. Nelson, Tasman, Tasman, Canterbury, Otago, West Coast, Southland. New Zealand, you are loaded up in a lot of different ways. And within Southland, well, see, that's kind of cool. Southland has... Well, they have Southland, they have Invercargill, and Gore. Within Otago, they have Clutha, uh, Dunedin, Dunduin, how you would say that? Central Otago, and Queenstown Lakes. So they got, holy fuck, I'm learning! There's a lot more to this. Wow. But do I separate New Zealand and Australia because they're so physically close to each other? Like I said, um, that's where I'm trying to get the separation... Or the, the put-togetherness of Ireland being one chunk, 
Scotland being its own rule, its own country, right? They have their own flag. Wales and England. And Northern Ireland, sorry not to leave you out, but I mean Northern Ireland, your border touching Ireland. Not to leave you out like that. But Scotland, you're you're touching England. You're touching the Brits. You're you're touching land with the Brits. Um Wow, but that could be territory. That could that could be, you know, the Scottish champion, the Northern Ireland champion. Oh wow. Well, the New Zealand champion and the Australian champion? How would I label that? Like globally. I I really want to get that narrowed down for this. And this hey, while I'm recording, as I sit here, I'm trying to educate myself. World map. I mean, how would I label this? Would that be the the Southeast Pacific? God damn. Okay, Ireland is apparently on it. Well, depending on how old this thing is. And I know politics change. Ireland is its own thing. Whereas apparently Northern Ireland is also part of the United Kingdom. Is that correct? Scotland is a part of the United Kingdom. Okay, so if that's all, oh, so, so what? The British is the United Kingdom. Am I correct there? But that whole region, those islands just northwest of like Germany and France, what do I call all of that? Because I know they're different, but regionally, that can have its own champion. Russia can have its own champion. Well, I mean, I don't want to get into a political statement about China, but I know Japan loves wrestling. Maybe the Koreans do, but I'll focus mainly on Japan. Australia and New Zealand and Fiji. The Solomon Islands. Good God, there's so much shit down there. South America. Well, that would kind of be easy. But holy shit, this game could be bigger than you could fucking imagine. I mean, hey, I enjoy Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Still playing it on the 360. I enjoy that game, and it's pretty fucking big. God damn. See where this can go? And I'm just trying to differentiate right now regions and titles and shit like that. The in-ring work. You want to put on a good match? Wow. I'm long-winding myself on a lot of things. As I sit here, it's been about an hour and 12 minutes and 33 seconds, 35 mark. Woo! There's so much I could go on with this. And goddamn, this is a lot of shit. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed talking about it. It's got a lot to do with wrestling. A lot. It's, it's, it is a video game. That's what I'm hoping on. For it to be something that fucking big. Now, for memory purposes, that's why I say you don't need voiceover work all the time. You can have text box material. And that's fine, because how does your character sound? Does he have your voice? Does he sound like Ravishing Rick Rude, let alone have his finisher? Does he sound like Chris Jericho? Does he sound like Vader? Does he sound like Booker T? Does he sound like Eddie Guerrero? You'll have to go with text boxes, and I think that's fine and fair. And hey, along with the role-playing, with the RPG aspect of it, role-playing game, for those questioning, um, I referred back to Fallout 2, where the text boxes were part of that game. What was one of the things that decided that? Your intelligence. Your, the more intelligent your character was in Fallout 2, the more options you had in the text box. So, that also being the case, you can incorporate a lot of that too. Remember, you know, I'm going back to Fallout 2 because that's just part of what I'm going with here. There was a, a trait you could unlock where within the text boxes... If you click the one that was red, you would piss off who you're talking to. If you click the blue one, they were cool with you, and you would kind of get more leeway in the conversation or what you were looking to do. That could also be a part of it. The Pip-Boy, all the, the special, right? Strength, perception, endurance, charisma, yeah, intelligence, agility, luck. Special, I think that's what it all... Unless my spelling's off, be yeah, S-P-E-C-I-A-L. Special. 
all of that. Maybe there's a lot of that shit incorporated into it as well. You could make so many elements to have a great wrestling game that, number one, could almost never die. And you wouldn't need to make a new one next year, 2K, with a new roster. The roster itself, like I said, the top ten guys in each world region never change. But everybody else, like I said, they could float around. What is this Australian dude doing in Mexico? He's on the move. So what? <laughs> yeah, he's from he's from Brisbane or whatever. That's who cares? Now he's in Chihuahua. Deal with it. <laughs> I kind of like that fact that it's like a constantly evolving. No, sure. In the in the avenue of video games, you want to make a game that makes money. Well, maybe that's where your DLC does sadly come into play, so you can get a couple more bucks. At, because you buy that game, if it's the best wrestling game of all time, in that regard, for what it is, you never need to buy another one. So yeah, you know, the company that would make this, or the individual, the small group, whoever, the indies that make it, I'm giving you the blueprints, but for it to be constantly evolving like that, within itself. Like I said, the top ten in each world region never move. They never move. It just wouldn't make sense. Well, unless they go for somebody else, somebody other's uh, world region title, then they're stuck there. But those guys remain kind of your main eventers. Hey, maybe you can knock them out of the top ten. Or maybe you can knock somebody out of the top ten, and that's fine. So shit, maybe this game is just so wide open and random Jesus, you never know. Honestly, box of chocolates, Forrest Gump, you never know what you're going to get. This game can be so random, it it could literally never be the same way twice. It's like listening to a jazz band. It'll never be the same twice. If they play the same fucking song, it's not going to be the same. Again, it's getting long-winded. I'm approaching an hour and 17 minutes. I don't know if I cut out the ums, the ams, the you knows, but as I sit here... Just past an hour and 17 minutes on my recording. As I sit here, that's kind of... That's a part of my idea for a wrestling video game that could absolutely kick ass and blow everything else out of the water. But, at this point in time, I'm not the guy to make it. I've just pitched out some ideas. But as I sit here, that's my take on what the next big wrestling game should be. Click.